Welcome everybody to our webinar session. We are very excited about having you today. We will start soon, but first we will mention some points related to the organization. Your microphone is on mute. We will keep this feature as it is to provide an organized session to avoid background noise and interruptions during the presentation. However, we have a messenger option. In the bottom of the screen, you will see an icon. You can submit written questions by typing them in the question box in your control panel. We would like to have an interactive session and discussion, so please feel free to send your questions. You may send them at any time during the presentation, and we will collect and address them at the end of the presentation. In case it takes longer, we will extend the session 15 minutes so we can discuss your question. You will be able to count with the presentation that will be shown during the conference. It will be sent by email on PDF right afterwards. Now I would like to introduce our speakers. Mr. Peter Jones has a bachelor degree in international business from the University of London. He entered the recycling business in 1998, acting as an agent for Eldon Machinery with the company MMH Went and then MMH Recycling based in London. Then became employed directly by Eldan Recycling in 2014, until last year where he became a consultant to Eldan for the UK and other markets. Mr. Yang Kia has a Bachelor of Science in Machine and Plant Engineering from the University of Southern Denmark. He joined the Eldan team in 1990 as Development Engineer. In 2010, Jan started working as head of the, of the after sales department, as well as product manager, testing many different material types in the inland machines. While continuing his work as product manager, he returned to development as head of R&D in 2018, where his focus has been the continued innovation and new design of the Eldan recycling solutions for the recycling industry with decades of experience in providing equipment for processing thaw materials like tires. They have their own production facility in Denmark where everything from drawings to the electrical control is made in-house to ensure the highest possible quality. About Bible Consulting, the company was founded in 1999 over the years, Bybold gathered an international team of experts and established a large professional network involving researchers, decision makers, and authorities. In addition, Bybold issues a free monthly newsletter on tire recycling and pyrolysis, which relates to all aspects of these industries and provides unique takes on the newest developments and trends. We hope you enjoyed this session. Peter, please, whenever you want. Thank you, Augustina, for the kind introduction. Um, and thank you for everyone for tuning in today uh, for our second showing of uh, our presentation with uh, in collaboration with Weibold. Elden is a very successful company and is very successful in our approach when it comes to our tire recycling customers. And today, I'll give you, and my colleague, uh, Jan, will give you a little bit of an insight of how we do it. So we've aptly titled our presentation uh, being Making Lives Easier for Tire Recyclers. So the agenda of the day um, is uh, who are Eldan? What is a turnkey plant? Why are they popular? and how do they look? So that's the agenda that we will follow. But first of all, just to show you those two characters on the left here, that's myself, Peter Jones, and this is Jan underneath. And, and as uh, Augustina has briefly told you that we've both been working within the Eldan organization for many years. And um, myself in a sales capacity, um, Jan has a little bit more uh, distinguished career within Alda than myself. He's involved in technical uh, as well as sales and research and development. Um, he's been at the company a long time and he'll be joining me later on after the presentation uh, to address the questions that you may have to ask us. Um, so the agenda, as I quickly mentioned, is who are Eldon? What is a turnkey solution? Why are they popular and how do they look? So let's get started, shall we? First of all, 
the Flower Eldam Recycling. Eldam was first established back in 1956, and it is a Danish company. Um, and just uh, this, just only this month, we've been celebrating our 65th year anniversary. It was a family-owned business which uh, started with equipment focused on manufacturing equipment for cable and scrap recycling machinery. But now it's part of a large Swedish investment group and it's uh, listed on the Swedish NASDAQ index. And for the last 40 years, at least, we've got experience in manufacturing equipment for, for tire recycling. We started back in the 1980s with a with a tire chip project for uh, a Danish um, customer who had a greenhouse and he needed to produce fuel. So we developed one of our raspers to shred tires to produce chips. So it started back in the 1980s, our in our infancy in tire recycling, but it's grown larger and larger. We have today. Um, Special today, we specialize in complete solutions from a whole tire right through to a chip to also rubber granules or to powder. We provide a complete solution, and that's why we emphasize on our slogan making life easier for tire recycling. And 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 in our factory in Denmark, uh, we are uh, building all our machines. Um, together with all the uh, electrical components and uh, screening machinery. We have um, over 1,100 complete systems worldwide and uh, over 8,000 single machines which have been delivered worldwide as well. And they're sold in more than 65 countries around the world. We're expanding all the time. Recent Recent growing demand has been super uh, uh, demand, and uh, we have actually um, started to, uh, or we have rather, we, we've actually um, uh, in, in expanded our, our production with three new halls, uh, one for production, one for welding, and one for the electrical department. Not only in the, in the halls, we've included uh, some new robotic machinery, and uh, three new milling machines. So we specialize in complete solutions and uh, not only building, but we also include the engineering, the design, and also the electrical side. So the question that we have at the bottom here is, uh, what is a turnkey tire recycling plant? When it comes to a complete tire plant solution from Eldan, we look at three main areas. Over here we have planning, and over here we have installation, and over here at the bottom we have commissioning. And those three areas are very important to us because we focus on being one supplier offering one solution. The complete plant solution that we are manufacturing for our customers, we must stress that it has a modular approach. So we are able to design our plants to fit the customer's requirements, whether it's a shredding plant, a chipping plant, or a full granulation and powder line. So we look at the planning, installation, and commissioning, and we use our experience that we've built up over the years to provide those flexible plants. So first of all, we're going to look at um, customization. Customization is a, an area that we look at when we've when we've progressed and had a, and received an order from a particular customer. And when we do, we assign a project manager. And the, the project manager and the salesperson will visit the particular customer on site um, to discuss the layout. That person also measures up the, 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 the site. It also look, he also looks uh, at the location of the electric and the key areas where we are going to position the equipment. The project manager is very, very important. Uh, uh, between is, is the link between the customer and the factory. Um, and he will see the order right through to commissioning. 
He will also give cust the customer assistance as and when. When he can decide from his drawings, uh, well, from his measurements, he will go back to Farborg, which is the factory, and he will produce drawings in order to show and present to the customer. Um, this example here is showing how we present it as a 3D format. So the customer is able to see exactly where we are going to position the equipment um, and, 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 and also it, it's also for our technical team in order to uh, be aware when, we, when it comes to installation that they are aware where the, the plant should be positioned. Um, so 3D design is very important. Um, that is one of the skills that we have the technical team in order to do so. We make our plant tailor, tailor fit. So this position, this photo here is showing a customer site that we have in the UK. Um, so basically the project manager is involved in uh, positioning the equipment. Um, in this case, we're actually putting the equipment in before the actual building is put up. So um, we're able to plan that uh, with our expertise through our project manager. Um, and as I said, the project manager is there from the start to the finish. We also look at uh, when we have that initial discussion with the project manager and the customer, whether the customer would prefer to have his own colors. Um, here on the left, you'll see the traditional Eldan blue. We're also able to pre present the equipment in the, in the customer's own identity colors as well. So that crops up in that area as well. So very important, our uh, project manager, and um, and he is involved right from day one. From customization, we then, in the planning stage, we then look at um, main machines. And when we are, when we are presenting our complete tire solution, we are looking at three main categories of machinery. First, we're looking at the primary shredding stage. And the main machine that we use for processing car and truck tires and OTR tires and pre-cut mining tires is the Eldan Super Chopper. It's a very, very successful machine. It's able to process whole car tires, whole truck tires. With this machine, we don't need to debead the truck tires either. Uh, the tires just get go straight in and we're able to um, process them straight down to a product or a shred size, I must say, between 100 and 200 millimeter. At that point, the material still has the steel inside. Um, a little bit more about the machine, we're able to design it so um, it has um, its own hydraulic opening, um, so it's easier to get inside the machine. That's an option um, uh, that we have, but also um, we have a special force feeding system, uh, which is there really when we're, when we're processing the uh, much more bulky material, i.e. the, the the pre pre cut mining tires or also uh, truck tires. The machine itself is a single shaft machine um, with dual drive. We have two versions. It's um, it can come in a SC fourteen twelve model or an SC two one one eight model. Uh, the difference between the two is that one is um, 1.4 meters across and the other one is a two meter wide machine. Um, also, depending on the size of the machine, it comes with different types of motors. It actually um, uh, is with, um, I must say that it comes with a frequency drive motor. Um, frequency drive motor is where it works um, like a hydraulic machine, but um, <coughs> But the machine actually has um, it works like a soft start, so um, there's a lot less energy involved when 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 it comes to uh, powering the machine. So we're making again a much more economical machine. 
um, the machine is um, very successful. Um, it's um, not only, as I said, a very, very, very robust machine. It's well designed and it's built for high capacity, high capacity of shredding car tires, but also it's heavy duty enough for processing truck tires and OTR and pre-cut mining tires. It's a slow running machine, so um, it's running at an RPM of 22 RPM. It has a very, very high torque with the with with um, with the cutting force of 20 to 30 tons per knife. And as already mentioned, it has a very low startup uh, because of the frequency drive motors and has very few wear parts. So it has very, very low running costs, low cost per ton. The type of knives involves, uh, there's very few, they're, they're, they're like triangular knives. So again, it doesn't take very long in order to change knives. So again, low wear in the machine and low running time. Um, we're able to process pole tires in one pass. And typically the, 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 typically the size coming out of this uh, machine is between 100 to 200 millimeter. We can make this machine also semi-mobile or fully mobile, um, but um, as said, it's a main machine in our plants around the world, and um, uh, and and it's uh, where we start in our plants. So, also in the primary shredding stage, we are also looking at um, a twin shaft machine, which we've uh, recently developed. Um, the twin shaft machine is uh, obviously got two rotors. It's a, it's a different principle to what we normally build at Elvan. Normally we are building single shaft machines, but we've developed this machine for a particular market, and that is the uh, TDF production for, um, for uh, cement plants. And um, here we also have a designed machine to be run with the frequency drive motors. So again, it has very, very low power consumption. Um, we have two, two versions. One machine uh, is producing a 50 by 50 machine material and another one is producing a 100 by 100. Uh, must stress that the steel is still in this, uh, in this, um, in this product from this machine. It tends to be a, a standalone, <coughs> standalone machine. Um, and uh, and and that is what we we've we we recently just introduced this and um, it's actually we've, we've sold a few machines and they've been very very successful so it's a great addition to our um, to our product line. <clears throat> the secondary shredding stage is um, what we call the MPR. MPR stands for multi-purpose rasper. I call it the multi-purpose rasper is because it's the workhorse of the plant. Um, the design of the blades, which are serrated knives in the, in the rasper, the design is basically to liberate the material. And the main job of the rasper is actually to liberate the material in order to remove the steel wire. Um, at this point uh, of the MPR, we're able to remove up to 98% steel wire from one pass. It's a very, very high capacity machine. Um, and also it's, um, we're able to produce different size material chip size that's coming from this machine because it has a in has a built-in screen system at the bottom here, you will see. Um, it has an exchangeable screen system. So we're able to chop and change the screen sizes in order to produce different size material coming out. Um, as mentioned, we're able to produce steel-free material from the rasper, but we're also able to produce a chip size which will still um, still contain uh, steel as well. So typically, uh, material from the rasper could be 12 mil, 15 mil, 20, 25, and 50 mil. The difference between this machine and the twin shaft machine that I've just mentioned is that this machine is able to give you the, the options of taking the steel out, as a, whereas the other one is predominantly just producing a chip uh, with steel inside. The, um, 
the machine actually, uh, the MPR is designed again to have uh, low startup amps. We, on the two larger models, the 160 and the 200, we have it with two motors. So it only needs uh, one motor to actually start the machine. And once it's up to speed, it, the second motor kicks in. Um, it's belt driven, so it's reasonably quiet. Um, we build it with a, a hardened, hard faced rotor. So it's uh, wear resistant. And uh, if you can imagine, the steel wire is very, very aggressive. And um, the, the hard faced rotor that we that we do in the factory will last for a number of years. Um, so the machine is very, very robust. Um, it, it's also built with um, exchangeable wear plates, um, again, to withstand the wear from the tire wire. Um, so the machine actually is indestructible. Here you can see the machine is actually fed by the tumbleback feeder. We will come on to that a little bit later. But um, uh, so the most common uh, input size is from the super chopper that will be um, shreds ranging from between 50 to 300 millimeter. Um, we have a long list of uh, references for the NPR. It's been a very successful machine for us and it's, and it's operated worldwide. Right. That thirdly, we will come on to is the uh, granulator. The granulator is a very, very um, compact design. Um, we have a block knives, which um, have a, a scissor cutting um, cutting process. So we're able to produce a very, very uniform shape granule. Um, the design of the granulator is also there to liberate the material in order to extract the textile. It's running at 400 RPM, so it's very, very fast. Um, so um, with, our, with our process of a complete tire solution, we're using a two-stage granulator process. We're using two-stage granulating process, basically because we, we want to reduce the threat of heat and fires. We, we, as you can imagine, with the rubber, there's a lot of heat generated. So we go from a chip size to a fine granule using two fine granulators. And, and because of the uh, risk of heat, uh, we use uh, what we call pneumatic air transports within our system. Um, and, and from the granulators, we use the PMT systems and um, it acts as a efficient system to transport the material around the plant, but it also acts as a coolant so that air is flowing through the machine and uh, it's a closed system. So it's uh, produced um, a very close contact. There's, there's, no, there's no sign of any dust coming out of the machines. So we're able to produce um, a very, very compact uh, granulator produced fine granule. So lastly, we then come to the separation side. So we're going from a shred to a chip to a granule, and then we are extracting the textile in, in the fine granule to produce a very, very high purity product. And the way we do that is basically we are using uh, what we call classifiers. And here we have what we call the uh, PC10, which is removing textile and steel before it's actually going into the granulator. The granulator will then further liberate the material, downsize, and then we go again through a second classifier, the PC15, to remove dust and textile again. And then before we then go into the aspirator, which is the machine at the end, which grades the product that we're producing and gives it the final cleanup blast before we can produce a 99.99% free of textile and free of steel rubber granule. We're able to produce um, many different sizes in our plants as well. That's one of the benefits of actually an LDAN plant. So again, we're making lives easier for our tire recycling customers. Right? 
around the world. So next, we will then proceed on to the next slide. And that will be focusing on the conveying side and that part of the planning stage as well. Um, it's very important for us to have a balanced capacity throughout the plant. So that's why we have uh, what we call silos, um, uh, which are positions throughout the plant. Um, this this picture here is showing um, uh, a tumbleback feeder, actually, which uh, is storing some of the shredded material, which then is gradually felt, uh, gradually fed into the rasper. So uh, the benefits of having um, uh, buffer silos, we call them, is that, um, for example, if you're doing maintenance on some of the plants, you can actually still keep running some of the plants as well. So if you're um, uh, changing knives on the super chopper, for example, you can still run the rest of the plant because you've got shred inside the buffer silos, which could feed the granulate um, and, and, and produce um, material when you're still changing knives. We're using also um, what we call pneumatic air transport um, from the granulation stage. Um, and that is um, for us to uh, create a very, very clean working environment for the customer. Um, it's a no visual contact. Um, so it's a very, what we call a closed transport system. So it's dust, so it creates a dust free environment. Um, um, it also, uh, the, as mentioned in the previous slide, that using the pneumatic air transport is also acts as a coolant um, uh, within the granulation stage. But generally, our transport system is, is second to none. Uh, we believe that it's far better than using um, belt conveyors. So we're back into um, planning, and now we will talk about the electrics. Um, we build our plants to have as little labor as possible. We make we want to make lives easier for our customers. So that's why we make them automatic with an automatic start and an automatic stop. Um, this photo. This photo here is showing um, the electrical panel. Um, electrical cabinet rather together with um, a, a control panel, which we have. Um, if you can, if you can imagine, it's like a surveillance center. So the operator is able to see exactly the loads on the different machines throughout the plant. Um, he's able to start up the plant and stop it from this single position. We're able to uh, uh, supply, which are supplying now um, for a long touch scene days. And um, this this example here is actually showing um, granulator one, two, three, even the the filter. So uh, the NPR, or uh, all, uh, we can do it in different languages. Um, it shows all the alarms uh, because we have our own electrical department. We're able to produce this ourselves, and um, it it uh, is it is a real benefit for the customer and also for us uh, to have our own control over the over the supply. We also um, supply as an option um, remote access for our customers. Um, it's becoming very, very more important that uh, customers and key key staff members are able to see um, from a laptop or from a PC that um, uh, particularly what, if there's a tire operation which has several several shifts, um, they can compare a night shift to a day shift. And here you can see that um, we are um, we are able to show the the loads on the machines, the hours of each machine. Um, here in this case is the rasper, um, the granulators. 
we're able to even go down to as far as um, showing the customer how much production has been made. So it's it's uh, it has um, key these these green spots are actually showing exactly where uh, the actual key staff member can actually tap in if he's on the remote access somewhere. It's, it's very very beneficial in today's world where most people are still working from home and they still need to be able to see production figures. But generally we are building our plant to have one person feeding, one person at the back end and another person checking and overseeing. So we're very, very conscious to actually providing a plant that is fully automatic. And that's one of our key selling plants. Um, and uh, we're able to do that. So next is the uh, in the planning stage is the is the filter system. We also supply the filter system. We make lives easy for entire customers. So in order to do that, we um, supply something like this here. It's a it's a an automatic uh, filter system which includes a cyclone and um, Inside, we would have filter bags. Um, there is what we call a scraper, uh, which will scrape off the textile, and that will be falling down through a rotary valve and then up into a screw conveyor, into a bag or, or, uh, or a container. We include the cyclone, we include the filter bags, we include all the piping, the compressor, uh, and the rotary valve and the ventilator. And in this picture here, you can actually see uh, the pipe work that we're talking about. Uh, we've got pipe work uh, down by the rasper. We've got pipe work, which will be feeding off the granulators and all the screeners. And um, it will then collect through this pipe into this uh, big cylinder here. So, um, and the textile, which is produced uh, or um, collected in there, it can. We've got customers who actually are um, compressing that and actually shipping that off. And in some countries, they are selling it to, to the power stations. Um, but the main advantage of having a, a filter system that we are applying um, is that we are able to uh, produce a very, very clean rubber granule. And also, uh, as mentioned here, we're able to provide um, a clean working environment, which is very important. Um, in today's world. Um, also, we uh, are able to guarantee the uh, rate of emissions coming out of the plant using our filter system. So that's part of the um, uh, planning stage. So next we'll be going on to um, the installation stage and uh, we will talk about um, supervision and training. When a customer has ordered a plant, they're obviously building the plant, but then when it comes to installing it, we will um, appoint um, two supervisors, a supervisor for mechanical and a supervisor who will be electrical. And that supervisor will oversee the installation of the plant uh, on site. He will travel uh, and stay on site uh, depending on the size of the plant, he could be there for weeks or he could be, could be there for a lot longer, but obviously he could be there for a lot shorter if it's a smaller plant that we are supplying. But his, uh, the supervisor, he um, is there um, to use his know-how and vast experience in order to put the plant together. He, he will oversee it, but he will also take part in the installation. And he takes part in the installation with, with the customer um, and his team of operators. It's, it's, it's very important to have um, a team of people from the customer who will take part in the actual installation uh, because they will, once they're putting all the equipment in, they will gain a lot of know-how how to uh, run the machines and, and also maintain them. Um, and this, this photo is actually an example. Uh, this we um, supplied a plant to Papua New Guinea 
and uh, yeah, Papua New Guinea. Uh, we 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 go everywhere, and um, and this was some um, uh, um, Michael and uh, Jasper, and uh, and then the team from the customer side, and uh, and they helped put the plant together, and they're um, uh, now running the plant themselves down there. So it's very important to to have that. Uh, uh, as a team, so uh, we're able to um, uh, train those particular people. Um, the the supervisor is is involved in the training of those operators to change knives, to change screens, to look at uh, troubleshooting uh, um, points, what to look out for, what to hear out for. Um, we're also with the super with the supervision and training stage, we're also um, the supervisor is involved in the testing of the plants. Um, as you see here, this is a bag of granules, um, uh, thirty mesh. I can see my eyes uh, are just not too bad. I can see that um, thirty mesh, and um, we um, we do a lot of testing. Um, the plant before we actually sign the plant over to the customer. Um, uh, and that is done when the supervisor is there. We will talk a little bit about the uh, performance of the machines um, a little bit later in the uh, presentation um, before we hand over to the uh, customer. Um, but, um, uh, and, and this final picture just shows um, a workshop container that we uh, we send along. We obviously send tools which goes along with the equipment. So we then go again from the installation stage um, and we will then go on to uh, what we call um, no hidden costs. And what we mean by that, when we are um, supplying a plant, again, making lives easier for our tyre recyclers, is that there's no hidden costs. And we actually, um, here in this photo here, um, we, we are actually supplying all the cables, which is from, from the electrical control through in between the machines. Um, and with those electrical cables, we are actually also supplying cable trays. So we are really making a big effort to actually supplying a, a really nice and tidy plant. We wouldn't have cables dangling from all over the place, uh, particularly in our in, in, in today's world with health and safety. So we we supply the cables, but also the cable trays. So you can see when our electrical supervisor is there, he is involved in putting all this together. With with the customer's help. Um, I must stress that the cables that um, that we supply are only for the machines. It's actually we don't we don't supply the cable. Um, for uh, which feeds from the main supply to our control panel. That is the responsibility of the uh, actual customer. Um, but we do supply um, specialized maintenance tools for each individual main machine for changing knives for regular maintenance. Um, each machine, like the rasper, the fine granulators, uh, super chopper, will have its own set of tools that we will provide. Um, we will also provide, obviously, in the machines, the knives um, and the screens. And uh, we also uh, will touch on later, but um, we, we supply screens of different sizes um, uh, for each individual granulator or for the rasper. Uh, and those screen sizes are to be matched to the output product that we're producing. And those sizes are determined by the project manager in, the, in those sort of first initial discussions with the customer when we are on site. So there's no really any hidden costs when it comes to a, a complete tyre solution for Melvin. So the last key point within our complete plant solution is talk about commissioning. And in the commissioning stage, as we touched on a little bit earlier, that it's dealt with by the supervisor and the customer. We um, 
we guarantee our plant. Not only guarantee our plant, but we guarantee the system. So we give ourselves, we, we offer with our plant a full system guarantee, and that will guarantee also the output material that's coming out. And we guarantee it to, I must stress, to international standards. Um, we are very professional the way we build and supply our plants, and uh, the customer will get what he expects. So we have no problems in guaranteeing our plants to, to produce a uh, product to international standards, and also we give that system guarantee. And with that, we um, also talk about uh, performance guarantees. Um, we, we, can, we do testing. And obviously we do uh, performance guarantees. Um, and in this case, we're looking at the, the plant capacities um, of the individual machines in a, in, a, in a testing period over done over possibly a day. Um, so we do the plant capacity. We are also looking at the uh, output purity. Um, with the customer and with his laboratory people, we do that within the testing stages in the commissioning of the plant. And here we provide um, the customer with uh, a particle size distribution. Um, in this example here, we have a particle size distribution of one to three millimeter um, from a standard line which is what we call a, a D4000, which is um, typically a four ton an hour input plant. And here you can see that um, uh, uh, from four millimeter, we virtually have 100%, and then it drops down to say 98% of 3.15, and then we go down to 2.5. This is the distribution curve of, as, as we go smaller of, and the percentage of material that's coming out of the line. And we're able to um, uh, guarantee our plant, as mentioned, and, um, and, and, and what we do, we then formulate a delivery agreement. A delivery agreement is then signed by the customer and also by the supervisor, and, um, and that is signed when the customer uh, is happy with the testing that we have done and uh, he sees the results. And there, and there we go. We then are looking at the shaking hand, and then we hand over the plant to the to the customer. Next, in the commissioning stage, we we then come on to uh, after sale. After sales is very very important, obviously, and um, again we are making lives easier for our customers. And uh, we have a very, very strong after sales department, um, which um, consists of three or four persons. Um, they have a, a, a vast experience in, in the machinery. Um, this gentleman here, Sven Eric, is actually, he used to be a supervisor. So he um, is very, very knowledgeable and uh, skilled, and he knows the machines in, in, inside out. Uh, this young lady here, Tina, she has uh, been working at Eldon for many years, 20 years plus. So between those two that alone, they uh, have a lot of experience. And, and in, this, in this photo here, we are able uh, to show you that we are stocking a vast supply of spare parts uh, and wear parts. Um, for example, knives, screens, Knife holders, bolts, uh, knife holders, um, bearings, you name it, we have it. And because we build the machines ourselves and we also build the parts ourselves, so we're able to produce high quality components that are left on the shelf and um, which can be expedited within 24 hours to our customers because we're ensuring our customers are down very minimum of time. Of course, time is money. So we are there to quickly react and get the spares out to our customers as quick as possible. 
and we we work that, that particular department works around the clock um, uh, for all parts of the world. And here you will see um, what I've written here, spare parts for old machines as well. Even for machines which may be like 20 years old, we still carry spares for those machines. Um, uh, and it shows the quality of an LDAN machine as well, if it's still running after 20 years. Um, so, so, so basically, um, we're able to carry stock uh, for all our machines. And that's the same with the electrical side as well, because we build all the components ourselves, we are able to um, supply any any components like a like a, a, a cartridge or, or or something like that straight away from from stock. So, to answer the question, why are they popular? Um, the answer is really because. We we make we do make life easier for for our customers, and um, really that we the way we do it is that we have one one contact for the customer, so that one contact at Eldan will then liaise with the various departments within the company, whether it's planning, whether it's spares and wear parts, whether it's to talk about maintenance whether it's to talk about troubleshooting, whether it's upgrades, and also to talk about deliveries. Um, we also make life easier because we provide and build an automatic system. We rely heavily on automation. We are providing plants which use very little labor. Everything is automatic. Everything also fits and works together. We are designed it to run smoothly. We have a central electrical control system, and as mentioned, we have very few operators. Traditionally, we would need just to run the plant maximum three guys. There's no hidden costs. Um, as mentioned, we provide the full package. We are supplying the cabling, the cable trays, the knives, the screens, and all the special tools for regular maintenance. So let's see how do they look. This, this uh, illustration here gives you um, a simple view of um, the modular design. Um, the modular design that we do at LDAN is basically um, can be shown here, uh, the shredding stage, the chipping stage, and then the granulation stage. If we're doing a plant from, from start to finish, we are, um, uh, we are producing uh, and what we call an E-line. So here we are putting in the whole tires, we're shredding. The shred is uh, typically uh, 100 to 200 millimeter. It still contains the steel at that point. So, so it's then fed. This machine can actually be a standalone machine as well, as previous mentioned at the, at the beginning. Um, the, the, the shred is then fed into the tumbleback machine. Tumbleback, the tumbleback feeder will then feed into the NPR rasper. The NPR rasper will produce the chip material. If you can remember, the NPR is designed to liberate the material in order to remove the steel. We're able to remove at, at least 98% of the steel at this very point. The chips will then fit, be fed by screw conveyor into the silo, which will feed into granulator number one. Granulator number one will liberate and downsize the material we're extracting um, from using the pneumatic air transport then into a silo, which will then feed into the PC-10, which will be liberating textile, but also removing any uh, steel again, um, before it's then fed into granulator number two. Remember, we're using two granulators um, in order to not go down too quick, too soon. And we're using the uh, air transport uh, as a coolant, but also efficient transport system up into the silo, which then fed feeds then into the final classifier, which is the PC15. Again, 
designed to extract textile and then the material the material then is falling then down into a, another pneumatic transport system which then feeds to the what we call the aspirator and the aspirator is a is a machine which is actually um, screening and sizing the material which will be um, final product final product is stressed at 99.9 percent .9 purity uh, so that's 99.9 percent .9 free of liberated fluff and liberated steel and anything oversized material is um, from the aspirators actually fed back through to the first granulator so you're recovering material um, again so and then it will feed through again and then it goes to the bagging line so this is um, basically the uh, modular system that uh, the, 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 the main concept behind our tire plant. Um, as we mentioned here, we're able to uh, supply with several, mas several machine sizes for different capacities. So this typically would be like a E4000. So it would be an, an input of four tons an hour of tires, whether it's truck and car tires, um, down to a typical size uh, of one to four millimeter. But if we're looking at high capacity, uh, larger plants, we would uh, either duplicate machinery to increase capacity, or we can also put in uh, bigger machines as well, bigger MPLs, bigger granulators. So. That's the modular approach. We can always add on as the market develops. Um, and as the final product says that we're able to produce um, multiple outputs uh, products. Plant upgrades. Well, we can um, also incorporate uh, what we call quality upgrading systems uh, with granules um, that may still contain um, uh, fine glass or sand so we can actually uh, pull off the material and actually run it over an air table to produce a very very high quality rubber granule 99.99% um, black so that would be black rubber um, that we would be producing um, you've also seen in some of the drawings or or even the photos that we've done through the presentation that we can also uh, supply feeding systems uh, for both car and truck tires. Um, to, so it can, it, it rules out then extra labor involved to feed the plants. We can then just feed it through a conveyor system. Um, this same automatic feeding system can be used for um, cleaning tires as well. It can be incorporated in our cleaning system to, to remove any uh, impurities. Um, we're also able to um, go to the next level, as I say at the top, um, by we can also um, incorporate a powder. Um, we, we also build our own cracker mill systems at Eldown um, to produce very, very fine material. Uh, we can produce anything between 10, 20, 30, 50, 50 mesh um, at, 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 different, at, at different capacities, input capacities. We're also um, able to uh, supply um, steel cleaning plants, uh, whether it's inline, uh, inline meaning taking the wire from the from the plant itself, or we have um, standalone uh, steel cleaning plants. Because as you know, uh, steel cleaning, well, steel is becoming more and more valuable uh, with the metal prices, and it's becoming a very very profitable revenue stream. So. Um, a lot of customers uh, have the tire shredding and granulation systems, but they also incorporate a steel cleaning plant as well. So we're able to produce 99.9% uh, .9 um, clean wire. So um, go to the next uh, slide. We will see basically our conclusions and um, and from this drawing here, you can see um, that uh, at Eldan, we can actually provide everything, everything what the customer requires. Um, 
emphasizing we make customers happy and uh, and we make lives for, for our tire recyclers easy. So here we are um, showing the uh, tire feeder, the super chopper, the chipper, the um, MPR, the granulation stage. The this is also showing the steel cleaning line here, the in line. Um, we're also showing the cracker mill system to produce the powder, um, and then we also have the um, the upgrading of the granulate uh, stage here, and we also show the, the filter system. So it's a so tire recycling is is very complex, but we 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 try to make it um, simple for our customers, and um, also um, we design the plants to to benefit the customer uh, because we have uh, very very low downtime, low operating costs, and we have that very very superior support. So with our experience and know how, we always ensure a much smoother operation for our customers. So that comes to the end of my presentation. I thank you very much. And, and now we'll move on to questions. Thank you very much, Peter, for your presentation. I will now uh, turn on Jan's mic so he can also be, uh, be on for this for this Q&A session. As I said before, we, you are very, very welcome to send your questions. We have already received some, so let's start. Jan, can you hear Hello. us? Yes, I am here. Hello, everybody. <coughs> I am ready here to answer any questions you have. So just uh, go ahead. Thank you, Jan. First question. Have you already installed any Eldar recycling equipment in South America? Uh, yes, we have, but not, not a complete line, but we have installed some uh, small uh, lines in, uh, in, South, uh, in South America, yes. Thank you, Jan. Next question. What types of customers do you usually provide to? Is it strictly tire recyclers? Or have you provide these items to recycling centers or other types of customers? Um, it is, um, it is, uh, I would say, all kinds of uh, customers. It is uh, tire recyclers. It is um, uh, industrial uh, customer. They are making a product out of the rubber. And uh, also what we call normally, uh, what's that called? Um, a scra like uh, scrap dealers <clears throat> also. So all, all kind of uh, customers, yes. Thank you, Jan. Next question. Could you please elaborate a bit more on the tire steel cleaning process that achieves 99.9% .9 clean steel? Uh, yes, when when you want to have a, a clean, uh, our, we have two cleaning uh, steel cleaning lines. We have one, as Peter showed, in line, meaning that it takes the steel coming directly out of the process from the MPR, and that will be cleaned to 99, 98% uh, around plus minus. But then we also have a standalone uh, cleaning line that will come uh, where you have a, a separate line with a, a feeder and uh, an MPR, what size depend on the capacity. And then we actually spread the, the, the steel uh, and cut up the rubber. And here we get uh, 99, 99 point, uh, yeah, maybe not nine, but I think he was, uh, it was messed into the to the rubber crumbs, but we will get the ninety nine percent clean steel. Yes. Thank you, Jan. Next question: How many tire installations do you have around the world? Oh, if I say uh, two hundred, it's not enough, but it is two hundred plus, and I would say now we are. I think we are at uh, 200, uh, 250. Uh, entire installations. Thank you, Jan. Next question. 
What are the size limitations on OTR tires in your primary shredder? Uh, limitation is uh, is limitation is as I uh, we have uh, limitation would be something like uh, if we take uh, an OTR tires uh, two point five meter diameter, it can be grab loaded into the uh, super chopper as it is. Bigger tires, bigger tires need to be uh, pre cut like uh, bigger mining tires. The the 63 inches and uh, so on, they need to be uh, pre cut. Thank you, Jan. Next question. Do you also offer second hand equipment? Uh, yes, if we have, if we have any, but it is uh, seldom that we get some uh, second hand. But of course, it happens that a customer buy and up upgrade as it, it's uh, his machinery. And then we get one and then we offer it. Yes. Thank you, Jan. Next question. Do you have some activities in South Africa, either directly or through partners or operators, recyclers? Uh, actually, we have uh, in uh, South, uh, South Africa. Yes, we have uh, together with MMAs uh, and also Peter is uh, connected into MMA South Africa. Yes. Yes, we have we have got plants down there. Um, yeah. Actually, you know, producing um, granules. You know, so, so uh, yes, we are we are in that area as well. Thank you both. Next question: uh, Are you uh, are you providing only services related to tire recycling plant, or you also can help to sell final products like granulates, chips, and so on? We only we do not sell uh, products from uh, coming out of the Thailand. So we don't sell uh, granules. We don't sell chips. We can we can help our customer to give uh, uh, other uh, customers, but we do not we do not uh, sell it. No. Thank you, Jan. Next question. So when you say no hidden costs, are you saying you do the electrical connection to our power system? We do as uh, we what we do is that we we ask for no not to the power we uh, we need to have a power uh, supply into the cabinet. That is what we and then from that from that power line we connect our cabinet. And then we do all the link connection out to all the machines from the cabinet and out to the machines. They are included in the supply. But not the power line from the from the power station to the to the site. No. Okay, thank you, Jan. Thank you very much. Uh, Peter for your presentation. Thank you, thank Jan. You. I would like to also, of course, thank you everybody for taking part in this session. We would very much appreciate if you could help us keep our service relevant by giving us your feedback. So we will send you a form uh, with a few questions very soon and also the presentation that was shown by, uh, during the, the conference. If you want to learn more about these topics, please kindly note that we are issuing a tire recycling related newsletter once a month. And also in our Bible Academy section, you will find a wide variety of articles that highlight the different aspects of managing this business. If you have any questions related to the webinar session, please also do not hesitate to contact us directly. And we will forward the questions to Peter and Jan. We would like to support you and discuss any need you have. We are looking forward to seeing you at our future webinars. Thank you, everybody, and have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.